In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a land cover change detection exercise using satellite imagery. Now, depending on the temporal scale you're looking at, as well as the elements of change that you're interested in, you might have to approach this exercise in slightly different ways. Starting from obtaining the data, the way how you would do this analysis and how you would eventually present your results. And uh, if I were to give you some very straightforward examples, well, these sort of change detection analysis are quite common in deforestation monitoring, urban expansion detection studies, and when monitoring agricultural land use changes, and in things like coastal erosion studies and so much more. And for this tutorial, I'm specifically going to look at the Los Angeles wildfire event that happened recently, which is a suitable example for this type of an exercise as it went on for a few weeks, causing a tremendous amount of damage. So let's say if I want to make use of satellite imagery to conduct such a damage assessment exercise with the intention of visually identifying the spatial extent of the area that got subjected to these wildfires, well, then you're going to have to obtain some satellite imagery from a time period before the event occurred and some satellite imagery from a time after the event took place. And you have a number of different options when it comes to obtaining satellite data for an analysis completely for free, with the Landsat and Sentinel products being my top picks. And even among these two, I actually tend to go with Sentinel products specifically for any land cover related analysis, just because it has a much finer spatial resolution of 10 meters by 10 meters, which makes the Sentinel image a tad bit detailed over the Landsat one, which happens to have a spatial resolution of 30 meters by 30 meters. So I downloaded two sets of Sentinel 2A images from the Copernicus data space web portal for free, with one set being from October in year 2024, before any of these fire events actually occurred, and the second one from, well, February in 2025, which was literally from a day or so after when the authorities confirmed that they have contained most of these large fires almost to 100%. Now, getting into the technical aspects just a bit, when we talk about satellite data, we're actually referring to different independent spectral bands that correspond to different wavelengths of light reflected off of Earth's surface. And this is essentially what a satellite sensor captures. And here you can see an example, the list of bands captured by the MSI sensor of Sentinel-2 satellite. Now, to create a natural color or a true color image of the Earth's surface, I need to use the red, green and blue bands captured by the sensor and find a way to somehow blend them together. And there are many tools that can actually accomplish this, QGIS being one of them. And by doing so, we can visualize the Earth's surface in a way that resembles how we typically see it in things like drone footage, basically things appearing in their natural colors. Applying this concept to both pre- and post-fire images, here's what we see. Now in this image, you can see the condition in October 2024. And now what you're seeing is the latest post-fire situation. Now even though it might not really be that apparent when you try to compare these natural color images, you can actually see right in this region the area that got subjected to these wildfires and experienced the most amount of damage just by doing a direct uh, visual comparison like this. Now, a unique characteristic of healthy vegetation is that it reflects a significant amount of near-infrared light. However, this is something that we cannot see with our own eyes because near-infrared wavelengths are beyond the visible spectrum and we of course can't see that with our own eyes. And at the same time, healthy vegetation absorbs a lot of uh, visible red light. So if you select the band that captures the near infrared range, which for Sentinel-2 happens to be band 8, along with bands uh, 4 and 3, and visualize them through the red, green and blue channels using a software tool like QGIS, we can create what's known as a false color composite. Now in a false color composite, areas with healthy green vegetation appear in red, because the vegetation reflects a lot of near-infrared light. And if you're wondering why exactly red, because we take all the near-infrared data, which our eyes cannot naturally see, and sort of channel it through or display it through a channel that artificially colors it in red. 
and that's why we call this a false color composite and applying this concept to both pre and post fire images allows us to visually identify the areas where vegetation was present before the fire and areas where vegetation is no longer present after the fire. So in this image you can see the condition in October 2024 and all these bright red areas provide us an indication about the presence of vegetation and if we now switch to the post fire image well you can see an entire patch has completely been taken out which basically tells us that no vegetation exists in this region anymore and that's quite apparent when we look at things through a false color composite like this and if you zoom out just a little bit you actually can see another similar patch right around this area as well and this is nothing but the area that got affected by Eaton fire which is right next to Altadena and right over here you can see the area that got affected by the Palisades fire which just by visual comparison at least more than twice the size of this area that got damaged by this Eaton fire and finally to get an even more precise estimation of the burned area I performed an index calculation which is normalized burn ratio which is an index designed to highlight the burnt areas in a large fire zone and to calculate the normalized burn ratio index you're actually going to need two different bands from the collection of bands that we saw just a few minutes ago we're going to need the near infrared band and the short wave infrared band and for sentinel 2 these two bands happen to be band number 8 and band number 12 we plug the layers in accordingly and we come up with this index called the normalized burn ratio however what's interesting is actually to see the burn severity which is nothing but the difference between the pre and post fire normalized burn ratio indexes and after I calculate the difference to obtain the burn severity we actually can get a much more visible output like this where applying a bit of styling to the final output can provide us with this sort of a very sharp boundary that outlines the extent of the damage as of 1st of February. Now if I zoom in to the Palisades fire area, well you can see which areas exactly got subjected to these wildfires. And as we inspect this carefully, we do see a bunch of different dark patches even among this area that got completely sort of devastated. And they sometimes reflect roads and paths which quite possibly acted as barriers for this fire to sort of spread from one area to another just because there was no vegetation in these areas. And I did a rough area calculation to sort of get an idea about the total area that got subjected to these wildfires. In this region, it was roughly about 114 square kilometers or roughly about 44 square miles. And if you move on to this side and inspect the area that got damaged due to this Eaton fire right around this Altadena region, that was roughly about 53 square kilometers or about 20.5 square miles. So this is how you can make use of freely available satellite images to estimate the damage caused by a natural disaster like the wildfires we experienced over the past few weeks causing a massive amount of damage in Los Angeles.